Hi everybody. Today we're going to look at the Sigmund object. This is an external for Max. It's used for pitch tracking. <clears throat> You're going to want to go to this website. I'll post it on Canvas. Uh, download the Sigmund zip folder. Um, unzip it. Then this needs to be placed in a very specific folder on your computer. Go to your home, documents, Max 8, and library. You can see right here, I've already copied this segment tilde folder, the whole thing, into the library folder. Uh, this way, you'll, Max will be able to find the object itself and the help file. Since I already did that, I'm not actually going to copy it. I'll just delete it. Um, but that's exactly where you want to put it. If you don't, Max won't be able to find it. It'll be different on a PC. Um, in that case, just look for the Max 8 folder, wherever it is on your computer. Look for the library and drop the segment. Uh, folder in there. Once it's in there, you can create, you might have to restart Max, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but you can create the segment tilde object. Um, just a heads up, Max 8 is only 64-bit. Max 7 used to be 32 and 64. Um, and so if you don't download the segment object uh, the 64-bit version, it will not work. Okay, make sure you do not download the 32-bit version. Um, once that's installed uh, in, in the right place, then you can open the help file. Sigmund uses uh, FFT, Fast Fourier Transform, to analyze an incoming audio signal. Um, any audio signal, really. Uh, and then it has different ways it, it can analyze it. It can track the partials, these are the parameters. If you double click on these uh, encapsulations right here, you'll be able to dig into the details of what um, of what Sigmund can do. Uh, these are some of its possible outputs. It can output uh, the pitch, uh, the notes, envelope, peaks. Uh, these are the things that it can output. So it's a very customizable object. And these are the parameters, number of points in each analysis window. Uh, I don't want to get into the, the details of how it does its analysis. That's a little bit beyond the scope of our class. But for our purposes right now, we can just copy this um, segment object with these arguments at hop number of points between each analysis, 4096. And then we're going to be outputting the pitch and the envelope. Really all we're interested in right now is the pitch. Uh, so you can copy this here. I'll delete this. Remember that this is pitch out of the left outlet. Um, we'll create a float. And we will attach that to an easy ADC microphone. You should always, your easy ADC should always have gain control. And if you ever get any feedback, cut this gain right here. Cut the input gain, not the output. This will stop feedback immediately. Uh, this is connected to my, I believe, my microphone right here. Input microphone. I'll connect it to the USB mic that I have. So you can see it's going to track the pitch. This is currently in um, MIDI sense. If you want to double check which MIDI sync corresponds to which note. The K slider is always a good reference. You can attach an integer to it. I think this is uh, yeah, about a B, this B up here that I'm whistling. I'm a terrible whistler, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, you can see it's in decimals. This can be converted to a frequency. MIDI is a frequency object. Um, but usually, I mean, for our purposes right now, MIDI sense uh, allow a l larger margin of error than working with frequency unless you're using pitch to control a parameter of something and you want a little bit of variability um, but this is always a useful reference I borrowed this from Joshua Feinberg's article <clears throat> Guide to the Spectral uh, Basic Processes and Techniques of uh, Spectral Music um, and it's the corresponding notes uh, it's microtonal, quarter tone scale, basically, and every node in their corresponding frequency. 
Um, so you can see, for example, this A is an 880 and this B flat is a 932. Um, so there's a quite a large range there in terms of frequency. So if you wanted the frequency, if you were using frequency instead of MIDI note, and you had, for example, a select 880, you know, when you want uh, somebody plays that high A and then you want something to happen. Um, in order for that to work, they're going to have to play exactly 880 hertz. If they play 881 hertz, it's not going to work, even though 881 would still be perceived as that A. So you can see that the margin of error working with frequency, um, especially as you get into the higher register, uh, is very, very tight. Working with MIDI sense, every semitone is uh, a number, so you have a little bit more room to, uh, it's a little bit more useful for what we're doing. Um, in any case, we can use this to trigger absolutely anything in your patch. We're going to use a select object. Uh, when the select object receives the number 83, it will send a bang. I'll print right here. I'll give this print object uh, an argument. Uh, the problem here is that this again is a decimal, it's a float, so we want to first round that to an integer. Um, and then whenever, uh, for as long as I sustain that note, uh, it sends continuous bangs because that number is being continuously sent to the select object and every time it receives it, it sends a bang. That's just what it does. But if I uh, whistle any other note, nothing comes through. Um, 83, 85. So you can see how powerful this, this object can be. Now, what if you only wanted one bang instead of a continuous stream of bangs? Um, right here, we would have to basically control the the uh, flow, and the one bang object is very useful. It's essentially a gate. Um, when it receives a string of bangs, it will only send the first one, and then the gate closes. It's a good way of controlling when you have a when you're working with data like this, streams of data, which is often the case with audio signals. Um, usually you want ways to, to sort of wrangle it and control it a little bit. Uh, now the only caveat with a one bang is you need to send it a bang in order to clear it or to open the gate. You need to send a bang to the right inlet, uh, otherwise it's, it just closes and it doesn't let anything through. Let's clear this. So if I were to send these each a bang, the gate is currently open, and then if I whistle either this B or this C sharp, um, you, it will send a stream of bangs into here and actually we'll put a button here just as a visual indicator so you can see this is going to flicker uh, you're going to see this continuous stream of bangs one will get sent through the one bang and then only one will actually make it all the way through to trigger whatever effect uh, or process you want in your patch so this continuous stream right here only one is let through until you send it another clear message. So every time you send a bang right here, it clears it and it it lets one through. Um, Ashley had a really good idea in office hours on Friday. She said we could use um, a note to clear the one bang. So if I whistle 85, it'll send a bunch of bangs and clear this. The, the one bang doesn't care if it receives one or a hundred bangs. Um, basically, it just opens the gate, and then when I whistle 83, it'll send that one through. Let me clear this. <clears throat> Such a terrible whistler. <coughs> so it, uh, you can use the 85 to clear this right here works pretty well. Uh, the one bang is not a bad not a bad um, way to to use Sigmund to trigger things. 
but the only thing is you're gonna have to have to be careful about dealing with this bang right here that clears the one bang object um, an alternative would be the speed limb object this basically limits the speed of uh, the flow of messages uh, or bangs print speed limb so now if I've given this an argument of 500 so it's going to be receiving a stream of bangs and every 500 milliseconds it'll let one through you can see right here it's working pretty well if you wanted let's say uh, this can be like 10,000 so in a phrase of 10 seconds uh, you might have one node that you want to trigger something um, so the speed limb would be a good way of only sending one trigger during that phrase. Um, really, it just depends on the context of what you want to do. The Both of these are good options. Neither of them is perfect. The sigmund object, as you can see, is a little bit unreliable. It can be a little bit cumbersome. Uh, usually, it's safest to use it um, carefully, sort of reserve one note what, that you're going to use to trigger something and don't have that note anywhere else in the uh, opening of your piece or before the uh, you need whatever effect to be triggered. Um, another way I've seen it used is uh, to use a particular register to trigger something. So say like any note that's higher than X will trigger an effect. Uh, that's a slightly more robust way of using it. It's a little bit more safe and foolproof than if there are any, any issues with intonation, uh, it won't be a problem in your patch won't fail to, to do what it needs to do. Um, to, in order to, to do that, you want to use an if. Um, since we're using, we rounded to an integer, if integer 1 is greater than 80, then bang. Um, this will be instead of the select object. We'll go straight from the round. Uh, so segment will be continuously print if right here. Uh, Sigmund is continuously analyzing uh, the stream of data. It always knows what pitch you're on, more or less. And then if you go above 80, it will send a bang. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how far above you go. This is a pretty good way of doing it. Just reserve a super high note or a super low note in your piece uh, to trigger something. Um, anyway, that's it. The Sigmund object, very useful, very powerful, slightly unreliable. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.